Is the number one seed for Arizona basketball still in play? We're going to know a lot more about this because Arizona has maybe the toughest road trip of the season coming up here. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for giving it a Locked On Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. This show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Check it out. All right. Now, Arizona basketball. Um, this is <laughs> this has been an odd season for Arizona because uh, there's a lot of different uh, avenues that uh, we can traverse here. Um, but Arizona starts out the year. They look like they're the best team in the country. You go into beat, uh, you go into, you beat uh, Duke in Cameron. Not only do you beat Duke and Cameron, you follow that up with uh, you have some more impressive wins. You beat the snot out of Wisconsin at home. Again, I think Wisconsin's overrated. Hashtag Big Ten. But either way, it is what it is. You beat Michigan State. Um, and then, you know, but then you don't play well against uh, you don't play well against Purdue. Um, and then you also, you know, let's be honest here. You didn't play well against FAU. But it's not so much those games I think that are concerning. It's that you lost games to your or you lost games to Oregon State, Washington State, and excuse me, and to Stanford. Those can't happen. And you've had games. It you've had games here at uh, McHale in the first half where you've looked absolutely atrocious. Uh, I think of UCLA for an example. Um, I think of Stanford for as an example where, okay, let's just leave guys wide open to shoot threes and essentially hope they miss. Uh, that is not a recipe for success. But it is what it is. Um, but Arizona, I do one of my biggest uh, one of my biggest pet peeves with uh, with Tommy Lloyd and again, Tommy Lloyd is a plus. Don't I, I'm telling you, Tommy Lloyd is a plus. I like Tommy Lloyd a great deal. I hope he's a coach here for the next 25 years. Um, but uh, one thing that has, I think, been a little bit uh, annoying about him is that he does not seem to see it uh, fit most of the time to uh, to bench players who aren't playing well. Um, you, you go back and you look at, say, Kirk Kreese's first two years. Uh, Kirk Kreese, especially come NCAA tournament time, granted, I know he was injured once, but uh, he could do essentially whatever he wanted and he was never getting pulled. And when Kirk Kreese and, you know, if that came from uh, not shooting well, didn't matter, not defending, not, you know, getting stupid technicals that could cost teams games, didn't matter. He was always going to be out there. Um, that was just kind of the way it is. Um, then same thing uh, for most of this season with Kylan Boswell. Uh, Kylan Boswell, uh, you know, let's be honest here. Kylan Boswell has been atrocious. Um, the, uh, the whole thing about uh, going off to the NBA, that ain't happening. Um, he, uh, he's he been bad. There's no other way around it. He's not shooting well. He's not uh, facilitating. He's uh, he's not defending. And, uh, you know, he's uh, when the shot isn't falling, he lets that affect every other aspect of his game. And uh, I think that's a uh, – I think that is a, that is a, certainly a problem. Um, now – uh, I think something that uh, we also need to keep a, a little bit of a keep a little bit of mind on is um, at what point then do you start getting benched for play? And again, and it's starting to finally happen with Tommy Lloyd, where um, Jaden Bradley has started some second halves, and on the, not only has he started some second halves, uh, he's been the one that's closing the game. Now again, I don't, uh, you know, like I say, I, I keep saying Jaden Bradley is not Jason Terry. I get that, um, but. The, uh, the offense flows smoother when he's out there on the court. Not only does it flow smoother when he's out there on the court, it also uh, – he also defensively is a massive, massive upgrade over what Kylan Boswell is currently providing the Arizona Wildcats. So there is that. Um, but – Arizona though has to um, Arizona has to figure this one out, and I think at this point you got to start weaning your minutes from Kylan Boswell. And you saw that in the second half against uh, Stanford, Kylan Boswell throws this really stupid pass where you're wondering what exactly is going on there, and he got the quick hook. Um, that's what I think you got to do. I think Tommy Lloyd's got to have the quick hook with uh, player with uh, Kylan Boswell because honestly. Um, it's not working out. It's not working out what he's doing. And again, 
it was uh, it's fine to start you know working on this stuff uh, throughout you know the season but we're about a month away or so from uh, the Pac-12 tournament and March is what in or, uh, March Madness is in what 6 weeks we got Arizona's got to be able to get this rotation whittled down they've been trying to do nice guy with Kylan Boswell for a long time and it's just not working um listen i think uh, i think Boswell went into this year uh Probably not working the hardest that he possibly could have, enjoying the college life. There's nothing wrong with that. But you got to be able to balance enjoying the college life with continuing to maximize your athletic potential. That hasn't happened. So which leads me now to, and we're going to get to Utah, Colorado, and what this exactly means. But you got to start looking at the rotation. Who are the guys that you know you can count on? You know that Caleb Love is going to be in their 30-plus minutes. You know exactly what you're going to get out of Caleb Love. Umar Ballo, leader of men, again, not the, uh, you know, not the, let's just say, Umar Ballo is very matchup specific, but he's going to play. Uh, Pella Larson, you know, you know that he's going to play. You don't always know what you're going to get, but you know that. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, need more? Listen, we're, if we're going to uh, get on Kylan Boswell, we got to get on Keyshawn Johnson. We need more out of Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson has to play better basketball. That's just the way there is to it. Um, when you're a hustle energy guy, you got to play better basketball. It's just really all there is to it. Arizona needs more out of Keyshawn Johnson and not less out of Keyshawn Johnson. Um, because, again, he's the uh, type of guy when you're playing against your Colorados, when you're playing against your Utahs, you need him to be able to – you need him to be able to uh, – be able to match up against those teams and not only to be able to match up against those teams, but be able to, um, from a defensive perspective, from an intensity perspective, be somebody that sets the table, be somebody that says, Hey man, follow my lead. Um, because his energy is absolutely contagious. When, uh, when Keyshawn Johnson is playing with energy, when Keyshawn Johnson is playing with a sense of focus, there's few better players in uh, a few better front court players in college basketball. Arizona needs that out of him. And again, there's no reason that Arizona shouldn't be able to get that out of Keyshawn Johnson. He is, uh, again, um, we've seen him do it. We've seen him against Purdue. We've seen him against Michigan State, where he was an absolute enforcer. Arizona needs more of that out of Keyshaw Johnson. And if you get more out of that, then I think that Arizona is going to be in a very, very good spot. Um, now, coming up, we are going to uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, let's see the Mountain Schools. Keyshaw Johnson, Kylan Boswell. What exactly does all of this mean for Arizona? But first, FanDuel! Check it out, fanduel.com slash locked on. All right, all kinds of good stuff going on with FanDuel. You can put down five bets or five bucks, and if that bet wins, you get 200 back in uh, free bets and free plays. That's how cool it is. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Again, there's nothing more enjoyable than betting on a game where you have an interest in the game, or heck, even if you don't have the interest in the game, betting, putting a little bit of coin, a little bit of skrill on the uh, on there, that's something that you definitely, it's, it's fun. Like I said, every uh, check it out, fanduel.com slash locked on. And again, um, you will, uh, you're betting on Arizona, you're betting against ASU, you're doing what you should be doing, all kinds of that stuff. Check it out, fanduel.com slash locked on. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, Arizona, Utah. Arizona, Utah. Uh, Utah is a tough place to play. Big shout-out, Matt Mulebach. Our guy is on the call. We need more Matt Mulebach, less Casey Jacobson. Um, that is a that is obviously a very good thing. Um, but Mulebach's on the call. Utah's, uh, Utah's interesting. I like Craig Smith a, a, a lot. I think that he's a good coach. Um, generally with coaches like that, you kind of wonder how long are you going to be at a place like Utah, but he's got a system, he's got a style and, um, and it feels somewhat sustainable to be honest with you. That's where, uh, that uh, he's done a, like I said, he's done a very, very good job up front, obviously up front, obviously you, they got the, they got the seven footer. He's a, you know, Brandon Carlisle, he's an absolute monster. Um, wish Arizona had him, but, uh, and he might be somebody that plays in the NBA. Not sure on that, but I think that he's definitely somebody that has NBA potential, mainly because he's seven foot, he can shoot three pointers, and he's not a total stiff. Again, nobody, he's not going to mistake, or nobody's going to be mistaking him for LeBron James uh, physically, but he's also not a total stiff. Um, 
He's an interesting matchup. Utah, again, this is another team. You can't leave the three-point shooters open. Again, when you've got players that are somewhat limited, what they want you to do is leave them open from three-point range because guess what? That makes their job a lot easier. It makes it easier to run off screens. It makes it easier for them to do a variety of different things. You don't want that. So again, you got to be able to close out on the three-point shooters. Um, and again, different altitude. I get it for sure. I mean, Colorado is certainly the different altitude. But this is a game that I believe it's still more on Arizona. Arizona and Brian J. Peterson put this out that uh, uh, Arizona in games where there's uh, over 9,000 people, um, they play much, uh, they're, I think they're 15 and one, something like that. Arizona's got to be able to do that. Uh, you got to be able to, uh, whether there's 400 people or there's 40,000 people, Arizona's got to be able to play better. I look for Arizona to beat Utah. I don't think that Utah has quite enough, I don't think Utah has quite enough firepower. And I think that that's going to come back. But again, with Arizona, we've also seen we've seen multiple games on the road this year where they've gone against teams that didn't have the firepower that uh, Arizona did, and they lost. Look, Oregon State, Washington State, Stanford. You get the you get the gist. Okay, which leads me then into Colorado. Colorado to me is a very interesting team because I think Oregon is probably the second most talented team in the conference, but I think Colorado might be the most well balanced. And Colorado pre presents a variety of issues for any team. Uh, first and foremost, up front, um, you got uh, you got Tristan De Silva. Now you got to remember, Arizona beat uh, Colorado by nine thousand points here earlier in the season, but you didn't have De Silva, you didn't have Cody Williams. Those are obviously massive parts to what Colorado wants to do. But Tristan De Silva up front is a uh, he's a load, he's a monster. He's uh, he's very good. He's kind of he can do a little inside out stuff. Um, Arizona, whether that's with uh, Keyshaw Johnson or whoever, has to be able to limit him because De Silva is somebody that uh, Colorado absolutely depends on to be a big time player for them. And if uh, you don't get that from De Silva, or uh, then it becomes a lot easier for Arizona to be able to game plan against Colorado. That's something that I think Arizona fans got to uh, you certainly got to keep an eye on. And again, this is where Keyshaw Johnson comes into the mix. You need Keyshaw in games like this. Like I need Keyshaw's energy. I need Keyshawn or Keyshaw. Uh, I need Keyshaw. I need Keyshaw roaming around the perimeter. I need Keyshaw just making plays. Again, we know he's capable of it. So again, that's what I need to see out of Keyshaw Johnson. Um, and De Silva is going to be a good matchup for him. Then. Also up front, Eddie Lampkin. If uh, you're an Arizona fan, you remember him from TCU. This is a uh, this is another good matchup for Umar Ballo, leader of men. I believe that Umar Ballo, leader of men, can. Uh, um, this is a good matchup for him because Lampkin's kind of like him a little bit. Big dude, kind of stationary, physical down low, good rebounder. Um, I think Umar should acquit himself very well against Lampkin um, because, again, for the variety for the reasons I just put out there. Also, we all know that Umar. And this is always going to be a problem. Umar in the pick and roll is not good. And pick and roll defense is not good. Teams uh, are crazy if they don't search him out. And if they don't search him out, again, they are crazy. He is a uh, he, he's a liability there for sure. And it's something that Arizona's got to try to figure out what exactly they want to do with him in that spot. Because again, he's just not quite uh, he's just not quite that dude when it comes down to uh when it comes down to being able to uh, guard guys in the pick and roll. Um, but in this game, he should be fine. I look for him to have a nice game. Um, and then on the perimeter again, that's where it's fascinating. Cody Williams. Cody Williams was a – now listen, he might not have ever come to Arizona. I get all of that. But Cody Williams was a missy val by Tommy Lloyd. Uh, I think Lloyd thought when he got to Arizona that he could just offer kids uh, whenever and it would be a privilege to come to the University of Arizona. Well, that didn't happen. Um, Cody Williams. Now, granted, he might have always gone to Colorado. Who knows? His uh, his family is a little bit different in a good way, in a good way. I think they're all very good people. Um, but he obviously was not looking for something to go to like a big time, you know, top 10, top 15 basketball program. But he's very, very good. Um, he is uh, he's going to be a top five pick in the NBA draft at six foot seven, six foot eight. Um, he can handle the ball. He's long. He's got a very, very good feel for the game. Not only does he have a very good feel for the game, he understands plays that are coming, and he's just big time. 
He's just a really big time player. Um, and he's also one of those guys, as good as he is, he probably projects better in the, he probably projects better in the NBA um, because of what he's able to do from a passing, from a, uh, um, from a passing, just from a versatility standpoint, his brother Jalen's probably going to be an all-star or a fringe all-star for a long time in the NBA. And Cody's got more talent. Cody's longer, Cody's more athletic, and Cody's better at the same stage. So that's something that uh, obviously he has going for him as well. Um, so uh, he's somebody that Arizona got to keep an eye on, obviously. Now, he's also somebody as good as he is. He's also more potential that or he's also more probably prospect than player but he's still a very good player you can't have him going for 20 plus points in this game arizona i would imagine puts pella larson on him that's just a guess but that's something that i think arizona obviously needs to keep a very close eye on is cody williams because cody williams can play and uh you know listen when you know the guys can play it's just kind of the way it is. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to get uh, destroyed by them. Um, and then another one, KJ Simpson. If it's not going to be Caleb Love for Pac-12 Player of the Year, it should probably be K, uh, KJ Simpson. Now, my guy Matt Mulebox sent me an interesting little uh, little uh, tidbit about KJ Simpson. Um, KJ is the first player in the Pac-12 since tease. Um, since Salim Stoudemire to shoot 50% from the field, 40% from three and 90% from the free throw line. Um, he's, he's a monster. He is uh, one player that I think Arizona fans very much wish that they could have, uh, uh, gotten here at Arizona. And the reasoning is fairly self-explanatory. He's really good. He's an awesome point. He's, he's the best point guard in the conference. And on top of that, he's also a gamer. Not only is he a gamer, He's probably somebody that's going to end up playing in the NBA, games in the NBA. But again, he's quite good. Um, and when you watch him, you just know that you're watching somebody that, um, you know, Arizona, I think Arizona fans would have loved to have had on their roster is what it is. Um, but he is uh, somebody, he's going to be an interesting matchup. I think that uh, this is going to be more of a Jaden Bradley game, to be honest with you, because Jaden Bradley embraces the defensive side of the ball. And again, doesn't necessarily need offense to be an impactful player on the court. I look for Jaden Bradley to uh, play more in this game as well. Now, if Arizona were to sweep, there would be some real lasting consequences for the rest of the country, which we are going to talk about. But first, Game time, game time, or excuse me, is it game time? I'm trying to look. Uh, let me just make sure on this one. I believe it's game time, but I could I could have messed this up. Uh, yeah, it is game time, duh. All right, now always go with your intuition, folks. All right, game time. New users, download the game time app today. Use code locked on for $20 off. Again, and uh, all users, use promo code Vegas100 to get $100 off purchase of a ticket to the big game. All right. I know people that is uh, not just for sports. I know people that have uh, used game time to get tickets to concerts. And honestly, um, it's kind of a little bit like LinkedIn. If you, uh, if you're around long enough, you're going to find people that utilize game time. And the reason they utilize game time is because it's fast, easy, and convenient. And a lot of times these things sneak up on you and you need to have something uh, that has your back. Game time has your back. Check it out. Game time, whether that's for a sports concerts, you name it, they got it. Game time. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now. Uh, we are going to talk uh, what this would mean for the University of Arizona beating the Mountain Schools. Arizona, that's it. Arizona is generally on the two line right now on a lot of bracketology lists. And I think that's fair, probably a low two at this point. Um, because again, you got some really good wins, got a good record, but you got some bad losses as well. If you go into the Mountain Schools and you beat uh, both of them, all of a sudden, then I think you start looking more at that one line again, because, and I get this uh, 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 question all the time. Well, Mike, Arizona's got these flaws, these flaws, and generally these are uh, uh, good salient points. The problem is the rest of the country has flaws too. Look around college basketball. There's not one team where you're like, oh man, they are just absolutely awesome. Um, and uh, Arizona could not beat them. Now, again, there are certain teams that Arizona probably doesn't match up great with, 
But there isn't a team that doesn't have significant flaws this season. Arizona is just one of them. But there's also about 10 to 12 teams that can probably win the national championship. And Arizona is certainly one of those teams. So if you get that win, if, you, if you're able to sweep those schools, then all of a sudden you probably have pretty close to a lock on the Pac-12 championship, knock on wood. But also more so than that, you're also starting to look at and say, all right, if we can just string some wins together, if we can just keep this one going, then we might be in a spot where, you know, the uh, selection committee looks at Arizona and says, okay, you're going to be a number one seed out West. Now, again, the other thing that's important though, is to just not lose track of that two line, because if you're a two seed, the selection committee has generally shown that they want you to be, uh, they want you to be out where, uh, out amongst the crowd. They want you to be on in the region that uh, you generally play in. And especially if you're Arizona, you draw a lot, that uh, that would be very, very good. So you don't want to go into the Pac-12 tournament having to win it to secure a number two seed. I mean, obviously, you want to win the Pac-12 tournament. We all get that. But you also want to be able to go into that knowing that if we win, uh, you know, we've already kind of taken care of business to a certain extent. Uh, that's kind of, I think, where Arizona's at. So there's, there is that. Um, but I also think they would be deserving of it. Again, listen, it's hard to win on the road in college basketball. That is a phrase that has been uh, uh, used time and time and time again. And the reason it's been used time and time and time again is because it's true. Um, these, again, these aren't, uh, these aren't professionals yet. These are kids that are, you know, 18, 19, uh, 20 years old. And when you're going against a crowd, you know, that's got 13,000 people, a lot of these kids just aren't, you know, they're not prepared for that yet. And that's okay. That's not a bad, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Heck, not necessarily. It's not a bad thing. It's okay. But it's also something though, that, uh, factors into why some teams lose games that they shouldn't. This is probably this is the toughest road trip in the Pac-12 um, because of the elements. The teams don't stink. Uh, the fan bases are fairly solid. Um, so again, if uh, you know a, a split, obviously is the worst case scenario. You can't get swept. If you get swept, then you start looking at a four seed. So you've got to be able to at least get a split. If you can get a split, then I think you feel a little bit better about where you're possibly at heading into uh, heading into March. But Ideally, like I said, ideally you're looking for a sweep of the schools. And if you get a sweep of the schools, then I think you're in pretty good shape. Um, so there's that. All right. Now, I uh, wanted to hit obviously heavy on Arizona basketball because this is obviously a huge, huge trip for Arizona. But tomorrow we're going to break down some signing day because, again, Arizona got some players, got quite a few players that uh, from the portal – guys who can really play uh, football and guys, some guys who are going to be immediate starters. And, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, from running backs to defensive linemen, uh, Arizona did a very, very nice job. And it's going to be on Arizona to, uh, you know, go out on the football field now and be able to prove it. Because again, you still got to shore up some spots for sure. That's going to, uh, that's going to definitely be a case, but Brent Brennan did a very nice job. You got some real difference makers, and you got some guys who are proven players as well. And that's what Arizona needs. Again, you've got a really, really good out uh, frame for being a good college football program, but you need to be able to, you need to be able to uh, um, continue to, you know, move some of the holes and whatnot. Because let's be honest, the goal is making the college football playoffs this coming season, and uh, and I think those are very realistic goals. But on that note. As always, thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. We'll be back with you tomorrow.